He's in. My in. Yeah, he's in. He's in. Come he's on, in. man. Come on, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What you jacket, I clean my jackets for occasions like this. How many I'm jackets? Not gonna you lie. Got? How many jackets you got? I don't even know anymore, bro. I went in my wardrobe the other day. I like. I don't even know what this is for. Like, who am I doing this nah, for? Nah, I hear that. Like, this doesn't make sense. But it's how. It's what I like. But this one here, <laughs> I cleaned it. I looked at it the other what, day. What hand like, wash thing? No. Look, a dry clean. Oh, dry, what? Come you took on. it to the dry cleaners, yeah? Come on, Yeah, man. yeah, If yeah, I dry yeah. clean it. It feels like a new thing. Yeah. So I'm really just bragging about it. I'm just here bragging Is there about policies it. where if they mash up your clothes, they pay the, the the bread? To be honest with you, yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, I feel like there is... Because they kind of pre-warned me about a couple things because there was a stain on it and I was just, they were like, okay. oh. And then they said, you can't dry clean it. I said, you know what? I'm prepared to take the risk because it's either that or I don't wear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah I hear that. So I took the risk and you know what? Yeah, man, God loves a tryer. Yeah, Respect, yeah, 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 yeah. It's either know. that or you don't try it or you don't wear it for Come real. on. Yeah. How are you anyway, my brother? Yeah, I'm happy. I was fuming, man. I was going to go mad at East Africa, you know, because the framing, I wasn't happy with it. Yeah, I hear that. <laughs> I wasn't happy with it. Do you know what? To be fair. Chucky was so close. He was in my living room. Right. <laughs> Do you know what? I'm going to be honest with you. That actually wasn't him. It was Dan. It was Dan. Dan obviously knows what he's talking about, but that day he was off. I'll be honest with you. He was off. I said it to you. Yeah, and he did. He did say it. So what happened is now, he's... No, no, no. I want to be right. Go on. You're in the wrong. I don't care. Thank you. Yeah, I <laughs> You know what? Sometimes you've got to put your foot down. Yeah, there you we go. That's if what If that is your say. job... See me, yeah? if I'm the DJ, mm. yeah, now someone employs me mm. to DJ at mm. their event, mm. but someone else who comes in who owns the building or whatever now, yeah, mm. basically says, no, don't do it in that, that, do it a bit like this. I'm going to hear you because you own the building, but hear what? I'm the DJ. But I'm the DJ. Yeah? I'm the DJ. I'm the DJ. Right. So I know what you're looking for and I can pattern that. Do you get what I'm saying? That's the attitude that you have to have. No matter how much Dan's doing the, yo, I'm Savage Dan and I'm I'm Mr. Boxer and I'm doing all of that, yeah? Mr. Chelsea, I've got it tattooed on my chest and that. Yeah, sweet boy and all these type of things. You have to make sure that you're stepping up. It was, it was just a miscommunication of um, where he's my boss. What do you mean by that? Hey, he's my boss. He's, he, but here, here he's your boss. But here. But inside this bit, just, you're the boss. When it comes to that. Right. Right. Yeah? So I want some conviction. I don't believe you. Right. Oh, also, like, but look, I can't slate that. Like, you know, I, I should have, but I didn't. So it is what it is. It won't happen again, is it? That's all I can say. Come on. Because that close <laughs> up, yo, I could see blemishes, everything. It was too much for my eyes. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it was all like, I literally looked like it was, what was it, 3D? You know when you're going to pop out of the TV? Yeah, cuz. Final Destination. Do you ever remember that? Remember. Final Destination, they had that in the cinema now, and you're 3D and shit, and flipping, they, the roller coasters looked like it was coming right out into the flipping to, to your knob. That's the way that it was looking. If we was doing, if we, what would a 3D pod look like? I don't want to know because do you know what it is? It's, it's a pod for a reason. We're not even meant to be filming it. We've just decided True. to film it. And now all of a sudden, man's making 3D pod. Just make a show now, dog. <laughs> make loose women, but for men or something. Nobody give me this pod talk. It's not a pod no more. Yeah, no, I hear that loudly. But bring back... Oh. <laughs> Cuz I don't want n- nothing to do with that. I want nothing to do with that. Keep going, I want nothing to do with that. <laughs> nothing. Anyway, how are you, my brother? I'm good, man. Yeah. We're here, man, every day. Feeling gooded. Gooded? Yeah. See what you've done to me. See what you've done to me. <laughs> I feel great, man. How are you, Chucky? I see you message on Twitter yesterday. I can't lie, I'm happy. I loved it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It was just it was one of them moments. I love it. It was one of them moments mixed with there was just loads of things happening on Twitter. And I said, raw. Do you know what? I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> just to let you not know. <laughs> yeah, just to let the world really know. Really loud today. here. Yeah. I'm happy. Sometimes you have to do that. You know what I mean? Sometimes just let the external side flow. Yeah. You know what I mean? Let it flow. Let everyone know why go on. I feel good today. I went to win this podcast as well. I let them know I'm happy over there. Oh, yeah, big them up. Sterling, oh, shout out to them, no. man. Big up Pound Sterling and that. I'm going to bring Pound Sterling here for sure at some point. 
Yeah, have man. A, have a good reasoning with him, but he's proper, man. It's yeah, come on to my Ian Bay over there, man. So yeah, I, 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 I really watched <laughs> he didn't it a bit. Like it. What was he saying? <laughs> they were fuming. <laughs> <laughs> I heard him say that he was pulling you up on that still. Yeah, man, but. Come on, man. I'm there, man. I was there, innit? Don't, don't worry. I'll give Pound, I'll give Pound Sterling another five years. Nah. Nah, he's f- five years. He's not going to say it on the pod. He won't. But see you on a private phone call thing. Yo, po, chat. I'm like... Well, anyway. Nah. Them man are old school gangsters, <laughs> blood. They got... Their principles are set in stone. They come to you like still. good fellas. All they knew was a pink suit. When I got there, first of all, can I tell you how far that podcast is? I brought my passport out. That's why I had to pay to get where's there. Where's it, Croydon? I don't know where it was. It was just so far. We were driving forever. And for you know, you're going off the bridge. Yeah. You're seeing cows and meadows and bare things. I said, when are we going to turn up? And then we got there. Mm. And it's just bare gangsters. I'm just like, raw. Yeah, now their thing's different, but it always has been. Proper. Mm. Certification from early stuff. Oh, from early. Like, yeah, big respect to him still. But yeah, no, I'm good. Do you know what? I've got a deep one for you today, you know? Real talk. Yeah, just a deep one. It was a question I asked someone yesterday and I thought, nah, let me ask you Uh-oh. to see what you would say. Nah, it's just a life one. It's oh. just a life thing. Yeah. It's just a life one. It's nothing about... But it's just how, how you would feel and what you would think, yeah? Yeah. The question I asked was, if you could take one look into the future, yeah? Yeah. Right? And you could find out one thing, what would it be? That is would you even do it? Absolutely sensational. Do you want me to be totally honest with you? I wouldn't do it. Why wouldn't you do it? Yeah, don't worry. Silence is fi- today. Silence is fine. There's gonna be moments in this bit here. Where there's going to be silence. Don't worry. There's nothing wrong with the audio. Man, I have to think about this one. The first thing that came to mind, if I'm going to just be totally Frank Ocean, mate. Totally honest with you. It's fear. Mm. I'm glad. I respect that. I respect that. Yeah, I respect that. Um, Because I know the things that I'm investing in today and... As much as you can prepare for tomorrow, there is a lot of hope attached to, especially our, our working field, there's a lot of hope attached to it. And being a parent, there's a lot of hope attached to it for me as well because I don't know if what I'm doing is right, right. but we will find out. I'm telling you. Oh, you know, in, in, in good time. Right. And yet there's just a lot of fear. Like if I get there and the things that I've invested in are not where I want them to be, then where am I? It's that thought of like, that fear of, was it all bollocks? What was it all for? Because today I'm adamant, you hear me on the podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then 20 years from now. Yeah, I know. Because listen, let's look at it like this, yeah? Come on. Sometimes certain people that are like stuck on the street and all of that, yeah? Like bittied off or whatever it may be. They had a dream. Oh, yeah. Some had a dream. Some had a career. Some had a family. Some had an actual, like, um, like a meaningful, I say meaningful, life. Yeah. And then, you know what? Sometimes circumstances that you can't even fathom lick you and hits you in a way that you, wouldn't, you may not even know that you had... It in you to react that way from yeah. a positive or a negative standpoint. Do you get yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. sometimes, you know, something mad happens here yeah, and you might feel so down. You might feel so down that you can't even really see a way out. But later on, you actually do. You persevere and you, you know, do certain things or you have certain support or whatever it may be. You know, we go through them type of things. But sometimes, you know what? Sometimes certain things can happen and there's no going back. Now, we could be looking at this from the glass half, half empty, by the way. Yeah, of course. But the glass half empty feels a lot stronger in this context than it does half full. But you know why though it's even... All right, if I centre it around, if I personalise it, completely personalise it, Go. it's more to do with the choices that I make day to day mm. and the path that I'm trying to create. I'm trying to create a path. If I worked in an establishment which was a little bit more settled and 
you there's like career paths which are set out when you invest a certain amount of time in it this is where you'll be or so and so forth mm. maybe i wouldn't be so fearful because that sort of element of someone else is taking care of how the lights are kept on is a bit more of a safer standpoint mm. just me in life i just like being in shaky circumstances mm. but eventually do i fall off Find out next week on. Ah <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, man! I don't so know. I think I think one thing that comes a lot, yeah, when when you ask that question, I think one of the first things that people usually think about is death. They think, "Raw, you know what? Like, wh- how do I die? How do I die? Or when do I die? Do I die young? Do I die old? Do I die of this? Do I die of that?" Which makes perfect sense, boy. Do of you course. think of death? When I, when I first thought of that question, I did. But then I thought, I wouldn't... That's something I, I wouldn't really want to know. Purely because... Honestly, when I tell you, bro, today, and not knowing the future, I don't, I don't fear death. For me. I don't. I don't want to die, but I don't fear it. Yeah? However, with that being said, I think that, like, knowing... Knowing when or knowing how or whatnot, I, f- I, f- I believe consumes me. I believe it will consume me. And then I believe that I don't know if I could enjoy the moments that I, r- I really would usually enjoy because I know that that's on my mind. Do you get what I'm saying? Now, look, we all know that we're going to die at some point. But remember what you said? Hope. We don't, you know, we're just in everyday circumstance. We're just outside living. But when you know at a certain point that this is going to happen, let me make let me make it even more deeper. Actually, yeah. Um, this person I was speaking to as well was saying to me that their neighbor had been diagnosed with a terminal illness or whatever, and they had like a certain period of time to live, which is bit, sort of what we went through with with Peter as well. Yeah. Now, this person was out yesterday or the day before, just out walking their dog. So I was like, you see that person, yeah. Have you noticed the change in them? And she didn't really know because she doesn't know the, that person that well or whatnot yet. But I was thinking like, if you got all your faculties, so let's say you, you can walk, you can talk, you can go to the gym, you can run, you can, you have all of these type of things, which means you can go out, you can go on holidays, you can do whatever it may be, yeah, right? Can you enjoy, truly enjoy those last moments knowing that, Within a year's time, this is what's going to happen. Can you truly? Chucky, let me make it a little bit more shallow for you. Go on. With my ex-girlfriend, when I was going to leave the party at 2am, knowing I was going to go home to see her, big man, I didn't like knowing I was coming to the end of the fucking party. I know <laughs> the end of my life. Every minute you're like, well, we're getting closer to two. You're like, oh... <laughs> I gotta to travel to her house. I've gotta to listen to her for an yeah. hour. No, just don't do anything. Just don't take me there. Pause at one one fifty nine for like <laughs> Jesus. So let alone dying. So yeah, I hear you. No, one don't want to know that type of people. Because we would all people will always say, "Oh, do you know what? If I if I had certain amount of time to live or whatever, I would just have a wild. I'll just have a wild lifestyle, and I'll just do this and I'll just do that." But would you really? Could you? Could you? Because you, you could. You physically could. If you had your faculties, you could. And if you had the money to, you could. You might say, oh, I'm going to go to Miami and do a madness. But you know what? You might go to Miami. You might fly there. You might book the nice hotel. And you might go to live. But you might be the person... Visualise this. Visualise this. You might be the person standing in the middle of the dance floor while everyone's raving and you're just standing... Posture up like this can't really enjoy it Rick Ross is all up on the thing doing his thing you want to recite the bars but you can't really because you know what's on your mind everything's around you like it's it's one of them them moments here where you realise that no matter what it is that you're going through life is still going on you know yeah because Diddy's going to jump on stage and say 10 years from now we'll still be on time and you're like 10 years from now I won't be here right it's nasty like that yeah come on I just, you know what, I think moments like that, it's crazy, isn't it? It depends on how you've lived your life. Mm. So I'm advised, try living your life with a healthy balance. 
Because what I notice a lot of people do on the end of their day sometimes is they want to take journey into finding out themselves. Mm. And I'm like, that's a journey you should take whilst you're living. It actually aids you and helps you as well. So people want to go and find out certain parts of themselves and their family towards the back end of their days. But they should be with you towards the back end of your days. Mm. And the people that want to go and do all the wild stuff, that's probably to distract you from what's actually going to happen. That's true. And I think a lot of people do that day to day. Anyway. I think people do a lot of stuff to distract them from loads of other things. Yeah, alcoholism. Um, all of that. Um, drugs, sex, any type of thing that you could be addicted to. Anything. Like anything. And I get it, man. Who the hell wants to think about the end of days, fam? Like, it's always pain- painful. People cry. You wear black, you go to a funeral, like none of this, you know, from what we've been told and all of that is appealing. So I kind of get it. Yeah, of course. We but just what? stop wearing this, like, I don't know, man. Nah, you can't, we could never tell people what, what? to be at. But like, yeah, I think sometimes, yeah, <laughs> when people are going through stuff and they come with this distraught energy, it doesn't help, man. You know, like, <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> you know, like, I don't know, man, you're going through something, yeah, and then people have like, it's mad. You know what? Okay, let's just be... I'm gonna, this is the next deep one, yeah? It's yeah. like, you might say that you're ill or there's a sickness or a family member or whatever. And then people come around you and then they just start... The immediate thing they start doing is barling. And it's like, you know what? That's not what I need right now. Because that's going to make me feel worse. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Don't worry. You don't, you don't have to be around me and pretend to be sad or feel sadness. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Let's just try and have an element of normalcy, an element of it, so that... But I guess it's like, this is con- This is about context. This is about, you know, how how each people react. Well, I'm just saying about me. I, I remember when we was going through um, what Peter was going through and mm. like people was coming to the yard and they was looking at him like he was an abs- like he was weird. And I had to like, there was one or two people I had to pull to the side and say, no, don't do that, though. Because he's still got his mind and he still knows what's going on. The last thing he needs is for someone to come and look at him like he's a, like this is some museum thing. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, that's not comfortable. That wouldn't make know, me feel comfortable. But I get it, though, because I've been in them type of situations before. Right. And it's just you got your memory of them and then you go inside there. And my father always told me reality hurts more than the truth. Mm, the truth totally. is, you know, the situation is different. But when the reality hits you and you're dead there, uh, that's clear. You just you end up just reacting off mm. emotion until like someone like you goes, Yo, wake mm. up, man. And do you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you need a little prep before you get in them situations, you know? Yeah, definitely. You need a little prep talk. You mm. convince yourself you don't, but it's like, you know, my brother is not the way it was. Yeah, don't worry. Yeah, exactly. Do you but know what faculties, is, mind's still there, whatever. Chat to him like normal. Boom, 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 boom. And then obviously afterwards you can let the. Uh, the emotion because naturally you're suppressing your emotions in that you know what I mean you're when you see someone mm. that has that they're in hospital or whatever then there's an element of suppressing of emotions just to make them feel comfortable mm-hmm. and then once you go then you release that and then whatever comes out comes out you get what I'm saying mm. sometimes it comes out in in with tears sometimes it comes out with a bit of anger sometimes it comes out with all of this questioning of life whatever it may be but you know yeah, anyway, back to the thing. If I, w- I don't think I would look, I just wouldn't look forward. I don't think I would go forward and have a look. You know, because I, I do like, the, I do love hope, you know. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I love some hope. I love some hope. You know what? We're working towards something and I believe that it's going to go a certain way and I'm hoping it's going to go a certain way. I don't know if it is, but let me tell you something. See that hope thing? I'm hugging it right now. And on top of that, yeah, I can't lie. Chucks, I want to be a legend, you know, bro. I can be selfish, to tell you straight. I want to be a legend. And at the end of the day... So you're saying if, the thought of dying, you, of not being a legend is... <laughs> I'm not... I need to be a legend, fam, in what yeah. I'm doing. I, yeah. I, I am, but I want yeah. to go and do a mad thing. I mm. really want to do a mad thing in life where we can inspire loads of people. And all of them people had hope. All of them people were doing things for the first time that no one probably believed in. And they had to get to a certain point before someone goes that person knows what he's talking about, you know. Mm. Whether they needed that validation or not is a separate conversation. But I'm like, sometimes some of the things that we're doing, like even this podcast, it must have looked mad at the time. Right. But guess what? Years later, it's something that everybody now invests time in and effort into. I'm glad I didn't have the opportunity to look forward to see what that looks like. Mm. I just kind of want to live through it because it kind of makes me go, 
Chucky, you're a sly genius, you know. Mm. I rate that fact that you even asked me because look what we've created off the back of this. I kind of like them moments, you know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. More of them moments that you create and live through and experience, that's lit. That's right, much right, more right. lit than just sort of like seeing the future and being there. What, what At what point do we let go of hope? Because it has to be that, right? Or do we not? What do you mean? You can't ever. You can't ever let go of hope? I don't think you can. You can? How? Sometimes, Situationally, go on. Yeah. Go. So, like in small amounts in hope. So, like some people are still hoping that their parents get back together. I'm like, no, no, <laughs> your mom's in New Zealand with a new man. I yeah, I'm telling you. And enjoying it. Enjoying it. Mm. So, um, mm. you know, what I'm saying, I think you like you should get over that. But um, some in some in, in yourself, I would say never give up. Like never give up hoping what you can achieve. But externalized hope, I would always say. But what what do you mean by never give up hope? Because sometimes, do you not need to give up hope? In order to set yourself free. Of what? Whatever it is you're hoping. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, I mean externalize Oh, like hope. always have hope. Within you. Right. That you can achieve something. Not something specific. Don't go, I'm going to buy a studio one day. That's kind of externalised hope. Like, into something right. that you still... I'm talking within you. Internalized, You believe yeah. you can, like, do this. Yeah. Whatever it is. Like, either way, be. I'm going to be all right. You're going to be... Yeah. Got do you it. know what I'm saying? Mary yeah, J. Blige. Yeah, fine, yeah. fine, fine, fine. Yeah. That's key. That's key. No, I like that one. Do you know what I'm saying? So I believe in that. But um, any other types of hope, because there's just too many factors involved for you to just internalise it and just say that you can police that. Nah, because you can't police yeah, that. When you, when you actually give up hope within yourself, yeah, it's dangerous grounds, isn't it? Brother. How do you get that back? How do you install that back? Is that... The, can... can can Oof. you install back hope yourself or do you need external factors to help you with that, i.e. support systems like f- friends or family? But Is you always so- need external factors. You always need that anyway. Even if things are great, you need that. So you never not need that. How you get it back? Have you ever lost it? Who, what, hope? I've never lost hope. Nah, I've never lost hope. I've lost... I've lost hope in, like, external stuff. But, you know, I look back at that and I'm like, that was good. I, I needed that. that. You know what? I needed to let go of that. I needed to let go of that. Because otherwise that's going to hold me back. But Maybe no internal hope. hope, I ain't never lost that. Oh, yo, let me tell you something, yeah. Mm. I was on my face. One, bro, one time, yeah. I mean, I say it all the time. I was on my face. <laughs> But you know, I woke up just thinking every day, yeah, that one day I'm going to like laugh about it or I'm going to get, I just always knew, I don't know how, but I just knew I was going to get out of it somehow. And I, do you know what the maddest thing is? The maddest thing is I believe that one day I'm probably going to feel like that again. It might not be financial. It might be whatever it may be. I know that one day or one period of time I'm going to be I'm going to feel like I'm on my face in some type of situation. But I st- like, I, I've done it before. I got out of it. I'll do it again. I, I fuck with that. I real fuck with that. I think that's, you know what it is? You see the key thing about hope here? It's when you've been through something, like where most people have broken or people have given you stories about how people didn't come back from that and all of this other stuff that you hear. And then you do it and you go, is that it? That's what builds hope within people. So like being broke, like Chucky said, I've heard man say, yeah, my man's flat on his face and made jokes about being broke and all of that. And then I remember being broke. I met Chucky when I was broke. Yeah, yeah. I was broke, 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 broke. So I made, I was broke. I would walk everywhere. Broke, broke, broke. Because when I were actually deep to it, I was like, is this what people are afraid of? Like, is this so bad? I was like, is this it? Mm. I just can't do all the things that I could do if I had money. But I understand that. So in my head, I was just like, I'm not on this. How lab. far did you, how far was the furthest you walked? On a low? On a low low? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> One time I met the man them. <laughs> Hyde Park, yeah. Yeah. Someone dropped me there. And when they were going back. I was saying, you got bus there, you got someone bus you by a drop like. Yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah, yeah. all right on that bit. So on the way back now, long day, you know. Long day, dog. Ice poles and yeah. vibes and come on. <laughs> The man, they were like, yeah, yeah, we're jumping on the train. Like, yeah, you know, I got to meet my mum down there. They're like, what? But like, yeah, it's got family stuff. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I walk from Hyde Park to Wood Green. Mud. <laughs> hey, that's a slap. Let me tell you something, dog. On that walk, I've never seen so much things in my life. Yeah, I hear that. It was, it was summertime, right? Right. Summertime. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. But you're so yeah. low. But it was summertime, but it was evening now. So it's the part where oh, people yeah, are either going mean. home or going out for dinner. Right. And you're caught in the crossfire. And you're going home. The long way home. Right. Crept and Coban, great album. Everyone listen. So I just thought to myself, yeah, 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 yeah. But I did, do you know what it is? The killer is like... Even when I started getting money, I was so used to walking home, I was carrying on doing it. So oh, okay. sometimes I would go there and I'd be like, I remember when I did this. I'll just do it again. Do yeah, yeah, yeah. Them, some of them right walks, on. yeah, such a slap that you were walking down certain bits here yeah, where like, if someone saw you, they would know that you're walking home. Because it's like, why are you walking on this road? Like, why are you walking? Like, where are you doing Yes, here? yes. Like, what are you doing here? Certain back street says, you have no business being, being there, here. Being here, yeah. Unless like, you jumped out of an like Uber or something. No business. What's the longest you walked though? I did from... Um, I did. Oh yeah, yeah, boy, flipping neck. I did from Hayes to Holland Park. So basically, put it this way, like, just for context. Oh so my! I did. God. Was it, was it Hayes, Norfolk, Greenford, Perivale, Hanger Lane, Acton? No, Ealing, Acton. Um, Shepherd's Bush. Big man. Holland Park. The man them used to play football in Hayes. Yeah, yeah. A forty journey. Yeah, I did a yeah. I did the oh. whole slap. I did the whole slap. How long? That took me probably like three and a half hours, maybe four hours. Where were you going? Where were you coming back from? I was going to link a girl. That was the maddest You're thing. Finished. I told man. I was man, going to link a girl. When it comes you know to what? inconvenience. To, let me tell you something. Man them. <laughs> Love it. I had to budget the thing properly. Bro. Oh my God. Let me tell you something. I know that it was only going to cost me a little buck to get there, but we were just having a certain chill type of vibe of whatnot. I just needed to budget this thing right. So I was sacrificing my travel to go and have a, you know what I mean? Go and have a little time with my gal and whatnot. But yeah, bro, that was a big, big slap for me, man. You sat down that whole day, innit? Oh, yeah, yeah. We was in a park. Like, hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was all right. My, You know when you do leg, you know, like, see when you go to the gym and you do legs at the thing? That's how my legs felt after that, after that day was done. After that day was done. And I was so lucky because when I wa- was walking back, I got to near Acton and I saw my brethren and he was like, oh, where are you going? And I was like, oh, I'll go and check my... Br-. I, was, I said, I, I made up some stupid thing. I was going to go check someone and whatnot. I was like, what are you doing? And he's like, I'm going to my yard. And I f- said, you know what? I f- Do you know what? I might as well just jump in with you, man. F it, man. I'm just going to my yard, man. Just drop me to my yard, innit? And he's like, oh, yeah, cool. Jump in, man. Boom, jumped in the car. Boom, dropped me to my yard. So I was all right. Otherwise, I was going to do that walk back home, cuz. Yeah, but was you sweating, though? Nah, nah, nah. I wasn't sweating. I just did... You know what? I did the walk... I accepted that this was the walk I was doing. So yeah, it wasn't like yeah, I, yeah, yeah. it wasn't like I was like walking upset or distraught or whatever. I just did the walk. That was what I had to do today. That was it. No, in my mind, you know the ones where he goes, you have to go and check my region and he gets in the car and he's just sweating up. You're like, so where have you come from? Because yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. I was, my son's was the window down like, oh, like, yeah, nah, man, I've done some, I, w- I walked, I also walked from, I walked from Greenford to Shepherd's Bush as well, which is quite similar, but I was going to the gym, um, so I didn't need to do legs that day. So you left your yard and she was probably still in bed? <laughs> you, probably, I wouldn't say still in she bed. She wasn't even prepared, she, was, <laughs> she wasn't even getting ready. No, she wasn't getting ready. <laughs> there was other shit, she might be talking like, about She wasn't in bed niggas. still, but she was definitely not nearly ready. Do you get what I'm saying? All hadn't, <laughs> had, all hadn't had breakfast or nothing. She was trying to last night's nigga. This man was making his Walking. <laughs> I'm telling you. Stinker. I'm telling you. Fucking stinker. That is a stick. So look, walking was my thing though. When I was bro- like broke, walking, 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 that was my thing. That's why I asked you. Yeah. So what was your thing then when you was broke then? Um, walking and then what else was my thing? I just was staying in my yard really, you know? Like... So wait, what's the worst lie you told about when you wanted to go out and you couldn't go out then? Because I've told the man them I don't need nothing and I've walked home from Pied Park. They've seen me clean hours later. Like, right, you're just going back now. Same clothes. Do you know what? I've done some actual, like, <laughs> let me tell you this actually, thinking about it. 
I think I told this story here before, yeah? Right. So imagine, these times now, I'm like doing some DJ bookings or whatnot. Ain't got a whip. And like, I'm having these, I'm doing certain DJ bookings now where my set's the last set, three till four or whatnot. But I can get the train there now, yeah? So boom, I've got the train to the to the venue, whatever. Got there early. So probably got the last train or whatnot. Boom, man's in the dance. Boom, 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 boom. But to give some context, I went to, um, one time I was in Topshop now and I saw like a, it wasn't a, it was a, basically a bally, but it was a woolly one. It was like a, kind of like what your, what you've got on your, yeah, but it was thicker. It was thicker. It had a lot more bubbles on it. Yeah. And like, it was like a little bally thing. So I thought, you know what? I bought one of them. So I thought, what I'm going to do is when I do the booking and I slide off and go to the bus stop now to get night bus back to the whip, I'm going to fling this thing over my head. So obviously now, what's this now? So obviously now, boom, I've got the bus now from um, um, the city. Because remember them time there where the, the, all the dancers were in the city and that? Yeah, yeah, of course. So boom, jumped on the bus now because I've got to get one to Oxford Street to get one back to the ends. So anyway, I've got one to Oxford Street or whatnot and I'm standing there on the corner though. So I'm not at the bus stop, I'm just on the corner because I don't know who I'm going to see who might have just come out of China Whites <laughs> or Ross Clark. What they, whatever they call it, no, districts and that. So anyway, I'm standing on the corner, low P by the bus. So imagine the bus stops there, but I'm around the side. So when the bus comes, I could just jump on the thing, whatnot. So I'm standing by there with the flipping belly on, yeah, on my life poet. One brother just walks past, super casual, just walks past me and he says, You're right, Chucks. <laughs> <laughs> things to look like you can't see me. He's already short, he's ducking down. He's doing the most. He probably would have bought camo today. The man walked past me and he said, you're right, Chucks. And he just carried on walking. He didn't even look back. He just, and I thought. Do you know what I hate, Chucks? And I laughed about that because I just thought later on, as much as that hurts me and it makes me feel a certain way, I know I'm going to laugh about this later on. Oh, down the line. Do you get what I'm laugh, saying? No. Chucks, you know what? Do you know what that makes you think of though? Don't you hate when you care about something more than someone else does? Oh my God. And, the, and half the reasons why you did it because you thought everyone else would care about it. Exactly, Actually, and no one cared. No one cares. No one I, cared. That embarrassment I've had, I, I, I think it's the worst. That's why I, I just can't care. That's the worst. It's, it's more mad as well because more time, like obviously you're not going to tell someone, oh yo, like I'm low, whatever. But like so much people will be willing to actually just drop you home. You get what I'm saying? Like, no one's even really caring like that. Like, yeah, yeah man, cool, man. Like, where are, you, where are you going? I'll drop you home. My t- See what you just said, yeah? My pride's been so loud at times. Even when someone has said, yo, what are you doing? I'll drop you home. I've said, nah, nah, it's cool, man. Don't worry, I, like, I'm going to think. Bud. Yeah. I dropped that out, man. Yo, oh, no, I would never do that now. But I did loads of that. It's because of my parents, though. They were on. My mum and dad were on. Not even so much about dad. Because he wasn't even... I'm not even there if I run out with my mum. When my mum took me out to certain people's house, I'm not allowed to ask for nothing. I'm not thirsty. Oh, yeah. I'm not nothing. Yeah. Don't ask for nothing. You just sit down. If they offer you, they offer you. Right. But you are not asking for nothing. Furthermore, if they offer you, you didn't hear it. Mm. <laughs> my mum's mouth dry up. Mm. Wipe around the rim right there like a dirty Why was bath. that? Why I don't was know. that? My mum wasn't like that, but my grand was like that. Is we it? can't, when we go to people's, yeah, like, you just don't act craven. How is it craven? I'm not being craven. There's big food on the table. Right. I can smell it. You can smell it. We can't eat. Exactly. And it's there for everyone. And then when we go home, you're telling me about yesterday's food. Yeah. There was fruits. <laughs> Listen, man, I used to hate my mum for that sometimes. I used to hate, hate her for that. Yeah. Give That's me. their trauma, though, Ooh. I think. Ooh. It's all passed down trauma, bro. Mad, isn't it? Yeah, it's passed down trauma. Because what did they go through? Oh God! <laughs> Look, my oh, mum. Listen, my my. Although my grand had a certain ways or whatever, yeah, had a, a decent relation. Had a good relationship with my grand, but my mum had it rough. Is it what? Nothing. All of them. Oh my God! And I thinking about it now. We I had small hints of it. So like, and so when my mum tells me certain things, it all start. It makes sense. So for example. <laughs> You see now, we come home from school or whatnot. We're at Granny's now. And also she would um, foster uh, children and stuff like that as well. So anyway, we stay, it's so vibes now, boom, boom, boom. 
she cooks some food, we eat some food, but I'm not hungry. Yeah. So I might have a tiny bit of the food or whatnot. And then I sit there and I'm, I'm we used to call her Nan Nan. So yeah. Nan Nan, I'm full up. I'm, I'm not hungry anymore or whatnot. So Nan Nan would say, you should, you need to finish your food. <laughs> but I'm not hungry anymore, Nan Nan. All right then. So she'll just take the food. Go on, whatever. So now, boom, 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 now, because it's summertime, what not, Nanan can have a chalk ice. Nanan would say, sit down back at the table. So I'd sit at the table now, because I think Nanan's going to get me the chalk ice. I know what she's bringing. She's bringing me back the same food. Damn right. Right. With, and, it's, and you know what? Cool. She warmed it up. <laughs> yeah? Before you get the chalk ice, nyam your food. <laughs> but you want chalk ice. What? That's... That's torture. And it's the only reason because why, because food was scarce back in your day, so you have to eat right. now. But food ain't scarce no more, but we're not changing the rules. Exactly. We're not changing the rules. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Hey. Because for her, she's thinking to herself, when I was young, well, I had to go. You think I could just, you, you lot have it too easy. You lot sit at the dinner table and could just turn around and say you're not hungry. You think I could turn around and tell my mother, I'm not hungry anymore. Chucky, do you know I had to tell my mum one time and my nan one time, they're like, oh, you lot have it too easy. I'm like, no, we just have it the way it's meant to be. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. We're not more privileged yeah, than yeah. like what the way life should be. We should just be able to say no sometimes. Yeah. This whole, from one time, they tried to give me and my cousins the same porridge we refused in the morning to come back. You know the porridge now, it looks like there's it looks like current of underneath water. At one point, the porridge was together. Now the water's come up a bit and now the porridge has gone down and you want me to pretend I'm going to enjoy it. Big man. I looked at Porridge them like, looks nuts after five minutes of leaving. Blood. It. Could you imagine what porridge looks like? What? How many hours later? Hours, bro. No, that's a mad thing. I'm looking at everyone like, so you've had a shit day and you want to take it. Did I tell you to lay down with dad? It's got nothing to do with right, me, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Fam, the you, other one, the oh. other one I used to get was a Times Table book. Oh my god, I couldn't say anything without getting the Times Table book dashed in my forehead. If I'm saying, oh, you know what? Ah, oh, can I, can I want to watch? Um, what was it? Ah, oh, Nan Nan, can I watch Jungle Book? This is the <laughs> Times Table book. That's the only book you need to be reading right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Don't worry about jungle. Yeah, exactly. Every jungle, this one, right. jungle gym. Tell you, read your times table book. So now I don't even want to ask for nothing really because this little thing that I'm playing with in the corner is gonna have to just do me because anything that I say, anything that I ask for, it's gonna involve the times table book. So I can't even watch Mowgli without having to know two times two. Time exactly. What's, <laughs> What's the correlation? Do you There's know no what? Honestly, I want. You see all you Caribbean parents, I think all of our generation and the generation below, we want an apology. You all go on Facebook at the same time. Treat like NHS. Friday, clap, do what you want. But we all want an apology because bare things didn't make sense. Do you know what? I'm, trying to, I'm actually starting to feel that there's a certain generation that although they may not admit it, they're softening up mostly because I think they're just getting older than that, yeah? But I think that they, some of them are actually... What do I want to say accepting of the new times? I don't know. But I think that when you have a... See, like, you will see a change in them sometimes when you have a child now. Whereas there yeah, wasn't, whereas 100%. before, there wasn't that much of a change. They were having us young, though. So, like, their life experience was mad, like... Yeah, everything anyway, was so, so different. Do you understand what I'm saying? 100%, now? It's like, bro. So, I think even with my mum... So, let's say for my, my granny, for example, yeah? My mum and her brothers just had it super hard. Yeah. You know? And then my mum ended up running away from home oh, sure. for that, yeah? And so my grandparents, that was it. They didn't... And then on top of the fact that they was with my dad and my dad, my dad's family was known as, like, bad, boy, bad boys and not good people and boom, 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 boom. They was like, yeah, okay, that's it. You can't come... But the moment that my mum had me, it changed her a piece. And she was accepting of me. Now... I still had elements of the slight smoke because that's within my grandmother for all of the years. It's maybe, you know, she was treated a certain way, you know, all the passed down trauma or whatever it may be, but there was a, a slight soften, softening up. Whereas I think that the generations before that, so see my great grandmother, how she would have been to my mum was not the same as the way that my grandmother was to me. I think my great grandmother 
was very close to her daughter, which is my mum's mum, as she was to my mum, if that makes sense. They were, you, there was no softening up. There was no, my great grandmother was not soft towards my mum or to her uncles yeah. or whatever. Do you know what I mean? This was how things were and how they went. And I think a lot of that has, that is that, that generational trauma, which is breaking a bit now. Because you're not yeah, going to be, hate, look at the way true, that you are with your kids. Yeah. You're not going to be like maybe how the things that you experienced, you're not going to show them that same sort of thing. But I think even when they have kids, think about how soft and like your kids have just had kids. And you're not like, look at the context in that too. By the time that happens, you're an older man, even more so. Do you know what I mean? So I think it's breaking a bit now. They were the sacrifice. They were proper the sacrifice. And I thank them. But Chucky, although I agree with everything you said, it doesn't rule out that I want a sorry at eight o'clock on a Friday right. on Facebook because they're old. I don't accept it on anything else. I'd block them off everything else. I want an apology because some of the things still didn't make sense. Mm. One time, our nan told us to get electricity. She called it Electric City. Oh, Go and get Electric City. Now, I found that funny. When she Lips. asked me what's funny, I was too afraid to tell her what was funny. But she already knew what was funny. Ah, oh, you think send me a posh English person. So now you already know what's funny. You're making me feel bad for laughing at something you got wrong. And clearly everyone else has told you previously is wrong. But now I must just be the bad person. Mm. Electric City. Why am I going to get Electric City? So no, <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I want apologies from these old people, man. I've had enough of them, man. Yeah, it's nuts. Would you ever do um, one of them, what it, them ancestry tests? I mean, I saw my boy do one the other day. Well, the one where he said it's a fix. This is what I'm saying. Yeah. And I believe Ring Pong. That's my friend. Yeah. He doesn't claim he's Nigerian. I believe him. <laughs> he said, he, he, like, he's, was, his parents are Ghanaian, right? Yeah. Yeah. So there wasn't even an ounce of Ghanaianism in him. So now someone's lying. Now, and, and you're bringing up trauma now probably for the parents. <laughs> Maybe they had to lie for reasons he can't know. I wouldn't do it though, man. I'm just, I don't know. I say now, no, I wouldn't. Maybe it'll change tomorrow. But right now, nah, man. Are you on it? Uh, I would do it just to see what comes back still. I don't know how much I would actually... I don't know how much of it I would take as gospel. But I would do it still, just to see what comes back. So I mean, I'm... All, I'm su- I, there's an element of my... A part of my history which I find mad interesting purely because, you know, my great-grandmother, she's still at her birthday is next month. She's going to be 104 years old. But she doesn't have her faculties anymore. But I remember when she was able to speak and like in the last stages when we were starting to ask her certain questions, she was like, yeah, she remembered her... My great-grandmother is fair-skinned. And she remembers her granddad. And her granddad was a slave owner in Jamaica. Which is deep. So that's like what? That's my great-grandmother. My great... My great great, my great 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 granddad, technically on that side, was a slave owner. White. White. Crazy. Yeah, it's nuts. She's got a picture of her. No, her great granddad. Sorry, she's got a picture of her grandparents sitting outside a porch. Yeah, there's two of them. They look badly like her as well. Her grandparents. They're just sitting on the porch. Yeah. And I'm looking at that picture. We still got the picture. And I'm like, all those years ago, to actually have a picture is insane. A hundred years ago, 104 years ago, obviously people was taking pictures and stuff like that. But for that to be her great grandparents, or her grandparents, sorry, and they had a picture, that's nuts to me. No, I understand where you're coming from. Because that's documented from time. Right. But her great, yeah. So her great granddad was a slave owner, which is nuts. Do you know what, like, that's it, that's in my family as well. Yeah, of course. So, yeah, it's mental. It's yeah. mental, it's in so many, it's in so many families. Yeah, yeah. It's in so many families, which then makes, it's crazy because it's like, we spoke about, you know, the trauma of our grandparents previously, and right. then we speak about situations like that where, you know, not by unfortunately these people's will, we have grandparents that were not really meant to be part of our situation, but they forced their their, their ways in the family. And like, they, our parents have to live through that mm. every single day and then come here 
and live through the trauma of knowing what mm. it is mad then they have to just deal with it and accept it and then just be cool with people yeah yeah for real that's, this is mad do you know what you don't have to apologise at 8 o'clock no more <laughs> yeah, I get not, it this is you mad know, you know what I was saying to you about going forward I wouldn't go forward but I'd, I'd go back I'd have a look at that I'd have a look at what was going on now listen I think I'd come back I think I would, it would change me in a lot of ways. And the reason being is because already, even though I know our history goes way past slavery, yeah, I know it does, yeah. But even when I watch certain things, yeah, you know, like, oh, it just touches me in a certain way, you know. You know, like, you see the whipping, big man, one whip. You know, these are were specialised, they specialised in this whipping thing. You know when a man got a hundred lashes? Do you know what that must feel like? Bro, you smell everything, bro. Bro, you, film can only show you what it what? kind of look like. Right. Bro, the skin burning in the sun, the, the smell of the leather. Yeah, these like, type of things I, don't, I wouldn't want to see. But bro, I would love to just okay. dip into like... that. See that picture that I told you of my great... great well my great, I can't bother to go through the whole thing, but it was like my, whatever. I'd love to go into that and just see, what was you doing? Like, what was going on? Like, what was you eating? What did it smell like? What was it, you know, what was happening? Like, what was your relationship like? What was life like? Nah, man, I'm a Cancerian. I couldn't do it. We're too emotional. Yeah. I know in certain environments when I was growing up that were going to get a bit funny, I hated being in it. You could smell it. You could just feel something was going to happen. And I was like, oh, bro. It's going to kick off. It's going to kick off. Imagine being in an environment where it's so normal that you mm. might not even know when it's going to kick off. They might just see someone and go, I don't like the way you looked at me today. Bang! And everyone just has to accept it. I wouldn't even want to be there for five minutes. I think I'd come back with... I'm not mature enough to be in an environment like that. Mm. I would come back and I would hate because I wouldn't be able to interpret that emotion as anything mm. else other than what I visually, just, you know, I've seen. Is there a moment in history then that you feel that you could, so like, it wouldn't have to be the slave trade era, yeah? Even though that was going on for God knows how long, but w would there be a, a period in time that you feel like you could go back or something that you would like to see or witness or something that might have been built or a, 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 a human that lived a certain life or whatever would you would is there anyone that you feel like you could would like to go back and see there's there's only going to result in music or mm. do you know what i'm saying like you I say marley to, i would have loved to have been there the night they shot up the stage with bob marley and the whalers and bob marley told the man they don't ever leave the stage like i want to see monumental things like that mm. because through the moments of adversity there's strength that you can take from it so yeah. maybe that would be a good balance for me do you know what i'm saying mm. or even just a a talk that Malcolm X gave, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like something like that would definitely go raw. Or I'd love to just go back and just see Arsenal. Oh, is it? Yeah. What? Yeah. Which, which part? Like I'd love to go and see Arsenal like in the in the late eighties. Like I didn't really watch football in the late eighties, okay. so like I would love to have been at Anfield when Mickey Thomas scores a goal and makes it two 0 and Arsenal win the league. Like right. that would have been men. Oh, like that's a. That's mad. So my, most of my things are just going to be football and music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I would like to go back to. But then other things in life, I wouldn't want to be in it because... Because I can just about deal with the effery today. Yeah, sometimes yeah. certain things are too deep. Man. Yeah, I couldn't be around, like... The lowest points of humanity, innit? They would absolutely... The lowest points of humanity. They'd finish you, huh? Like, emotionally, mentally. Bro, that it would... would yeah. I think that's what would... It would, it would take a lot out of me, definitely. Yeah, emotion, it it's, it's, sorry to cut you. Sorry to cut you. I think it's down to understanding. I understand some stuff now. I just need to accept some stuff now from my new understandings, and then I'll be cool to go on back in time and do that. That would be too mad, Chucky man. Don't you feel like from doing documentaries and all of that, you've just learnt so much. Massive. You've man. been exposed to so much. For me, I haven't even settled down with some of the things I learnt in Lebanon. Mm. I'm still like. You mean man can just bomb up the coffee shop and like, and everyone just carries on back to normal? That's their reality. That's like, their normality. That's their normalcy. <laughs> That's nuts. I just need some time with that type of stuff. As much as people go, oh yeah, but we all know that. I'm like, yeah, but I was there. Mm. Like I was really there. <laughs> That's all too much for me, man. Yeah, yeah. I think obviously the, the difficult part about doing something like that 
even though we're talking from a, a place that could, it could never happen. Yeah, yeah, we can't travel real. back into time. But you know what? The reality in doing something like that, if you could, could be very traumatic. And sometimes in that trauma, it's difficult to move past that because there's certain things that you can't unsee. When you see something, you, you sometimes you just can't unsee that. Do you know what I mean? But then now I'm thinking about it. That maybe it's the way we presented it. There's a couple parties I would want to have gone oh, to. Oh, God, yeah. See there? See now there? if we go back to music, I'm thinking I would have loved to have been at the Source Awards. I think it was, what, 94, 95? When it was in New York. Yeah. And then, like, all the... I've got something. All the South man went on stage and Outkast came out like, what? Y'all don't have love for the South? Or oh, yeah, 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 of course. I would have loved, I would have been lit. I would have been so but lit. Could you could imagine the there. tension in that as well? Because that was obviously the time when flipping, that, oh, that was a that was a sticky time, in it? Because obviously Biggie and Tupac were cool. Like prior to all of that, they were cool. But then, what was it? Tupac got shot, felt like Biggie had something to do with that. He got shot in New York, didn't he? Yeah, yeah for Biggie. Yeah, um, in some elevator or whatnot. He's yeah. feeling like, rah, Either Biggie has something to do with it or my man's not riding the way that I expected him to ride, he, which, yeah. which is causing that, that sort of tension. Then obviously him, Suge, whatnot. They, and then I think what happened is when I was watching um, I was watching an interview, I think what made it even worse was one of them magazines. I think it was Vibe magazine or something like that. One of them magazines posted it with the front cover made it like East versus West, East Coast versus West Coast. They were the first to sort of document that. And that, you remember them times there, magazines were Massive, super bro. important in within the culture. Massive. So that obviously added more tension. So, you know, you got these lot now, an award show, you know, what what is it? Like, where, where were they? Were what? they in New York? They were in New York, They were in New York, weren't they? That's why I rated the South, man. Huh? No, they were eating... They Snoop, were, I it was, listened to West, it, it was West Coast. The thing is, yeah, it depends where Snoop told the story, though. Because sometimes he'd be getting details wrong. It was, so. no, he was like, after, like, so obviously he played it under the, you don't got love for the West? You ain't got love yeah, for the West? Yeah, for the West. Hey, that yeah, was yeah, lit when Snoop yeah. done that. Yeah. Yeah. You ain't got love for all that stuff. And then there was, a, there was a story afterwards where he told it. I would show it to you afterwards. And yeah. it was like, um, afterwards, like, backstage and stuff, uh, Tupac and the West Coast lot, like, they saw Nas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 I don't want to hear it. I knew it was that story because Nas said it didn't go like that. Yeah, yeah, Nas, Nas, said, Nas said it didn't, didn't go, go like, that. like that. So yeah, that's yeah, the reason yeah. why I said, oh, I I'm love glad you said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he said yeah, that yeah. on his album. Yeah, it didn't go like that. So that's why it's, it wasn't It wasn't that. It Snoop wasn't that. was there, you get me, but Snoop has got some things wrong. Not to say there wasn't truth in it, but yeah. I believe Nas. How did the story go then? I can't remember now, exactly what Nas he said. He said, um, Nas said, oh, it didn't go like that, but he did say that they were organising to link. I think in the West Coast, they was organising to link to squash the whole team. But then he had a show and it, then they found out that Tupac was got shot. And not, there's an audio that plays on the song where I can't remember who it actually, the voice is. Um, is it, I think, uh, what is his name? Something Luke. What was his name again? What was my man's name again? You lot will tell me. Certain Luke. I think he's from Miami or some shit like that. One of them old school... Dons. Dons, anyway. I'm, I believe... No, it wasn't him. It wasn't him. It was someone else. Whatever, anyway. But he's come out on the stage and then told everyone at the Nas show, just to let you lot know, we just got word that um, Tupac died. So they didn't, they didn't They didn't end up getting to Link. But that was what they, That was what the plan was supposed to be. Oh, that's Pete. But... Um, but you know what, yeah, as you say that, yeah, there's, couple there's a part of the 60s that I feel like I would have liked to have been in, you know. And you know what, like, I'll tell what you what, it? let me just pl- let me play you this. What music video. was prominent? I got I got a song for you, one second. Because I might be even joining you, you know. It's, right. Music just gets me, got, I'll be in right. music. You see, and I hear this song in movies, yeah, but there's something about this. I don't know what was I don't know what it was also this I heard this recently as well yeah oh 
oh my god pregnancy loud the drugs and the sex and the love and the feeling and the emotion take me there and the hair on oh my god i, can't I would have been you. a i would have been a love making bitty what and that would have been a niche so it would have been so genuine i'm so telling the food you it would have been crazy the s- it's what you send me by Aretha Franklin, by the way. I'm um, honestly, yeah, musically that era, yeah, they got some gems, bro. But then even for me, I would have still have gone to the yard side, though. Oh yeah, of course. Oh, of course, of course. I would have went straight there. That revival, the Scar era, and all of that. What? When my mum starts getting into her bag playing music, I'm just like, you know what? Don't start. I can me. see why you reflect on the past, you know, mummy, because there's a couple of rhythms that you're playing. I'm like, this is cold. Don't start me off. Yeah, that instrument vibe kind of was crazy. Bro, man. Because I can just tell they were vibing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was... See, back then, yeah? Them times there, it was just about the music. It was just about the party. It was just about... It was about the music, and it was just about the vibe. That was I it. I reckon everyone was having sex. But I would have oh, went straight back there as well. Hold on, wait. See? You would have gone straight back there? Let me tell you where I would have went to. Tell you what I would have went to. My phone is going off. I'm playing with you. It's going to reflect to you like twice. Three times. Is it? Come on, hat trick. Come on, my <laughs> brother. Come on, my God. I mean, yeah, it's a good one. I'm sorry. Come on, I'm going back to. I would have went straight Yo! back there. I would have went straight back there. Oh, my what are you brother. talking about? She's what I love about Jamaicans, the simplicity of what's going on. How's she feel? She loves me now. Right. Oh, she loves me now. What about tomorrow? Forget that big, big man. Listen to this on Wanna Fight, man. But I'm a big spliff. The, yeah, and just chill out with the one. You get me a bean in the youth, then I'm running in the yard. And whoa, I, that's the vibe I want. I'm telling you. If you ask me the life I want, that is the life I want. Very simple. With a hundred women. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would have went straight. I would have went back further than that, to be fair. But, but it's crazy um, how music will make you want to go back to an era. And but then some of the music they're making that I have the pleasure of hearing is through some P and Doug. Oh, so that's it? where I'm going. That era might be in a little bit mad stressful. Yeah, no, that, that that's the, that's the next thing. Them times there it was about it was about the party and it was obviously about the music, but also there was a lot of politics in in their life and what was going on at the time. They're singing about a lot of they're singing about either love or politics. Never anything else. They laugh with that. Even real. when they're talking about smoking weed, that's politics. That's politics for them. Why are you stopping us from doing this? This is hurt. This is what we've done overseas and we're right. you're making us come here in the first place and now we can't do what This is a certain way of living or whatever. This is the way that we meditate. Why are you stopping us from doing that? Do you know what's so crazy? When you think about all the ingredients that allow you to make music from your culture, Grimes are matting. Huh? Grime is actually a mad thing. Yeah, of course. That's actually a mad thing. As a sonical experience, life around that time, because I lived through it, was actually crazy. And that is the best way of summarising it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, some of the best things come out of people being marginalised. Really? And pushed to the side. Mm. What do you mean? Because it's like, what, is that, we can't, you're not letting us, and we can't, and we we're not a foot we you, like we're in this situation where we're not able to do ah right, cool let's just go and do our own thing let's go and start our own thing. Do you think that's when art is in its in its in its bag when it's hundred percent struggle hundred percent for me mm. for me when it's in when it's in that stage there it's so pure because yeah, one on. of the reasons being why it's so pure as well is because the mindset in why people are doing it mm. is not with the noise. Mm, they marginalise themselves, themselves on purpose right or they've, or they've so been marginalised they've been, they've been marginalised so it's so like you know right. what yeah we're going to do our own thing and we're going to do this out of out of love yeah. and to create our own just to create our own thing not it's nothing to do with gas it's nothing to do with flipping 
you know, selling this or making this amount of money or whatever it may be. It's the politics in it, but it's also it's also creating the love for your own baby. Can I fast forward the conversation then Go and on. just say using that today will art will art struggle to progress if the struggle is not as harsh as it was growing up because sometimes for example there's loads of samples from back in the day and we've spoken about how life has created struggle which means mm. the art has a purer form so if the struggle is disappearing today in that type of aspect what does that mean for art there's always going to be struggle though bro there's always going to be struggle there's always struggle man there's a mm. there's a lot of people out there struggling in many different ways and you know what let's look at inflation that's what's going to make a lot of people struggle. Mm. You know, that's going to make a lot of people struggle in a way that they, and, and feeling like they're going to have to do all different types of things to be able to make money or do their, do whatever it is to cut through. I went to um, WH Smith. This is going off the, the topic a bit, but I'll come back to it. Mm -hmm. I went to WH Smith the other day. The small, you know, the smallest bottle of the Evian? Yeah. Yeah. Evian. That shit cost me £1.39. I remember when that shit was 50p, my brother. Big man, what do you mean £1.39? It was one pound thirty nine. You know it's from this... God, huh? You know this man's package something from God, and they're giving it to me to pay one pound thirty nine. That is my. my I'm God. stealing water now. Nah. And so obviously, you know, there's a lot of money. There's a lot of money out here, but there's still a lot of people that are not able to get it, and also people are being marginalized in many different ways. Mm. So, people start creating their own thing, where now they can benefit. And where it starts to get techy is the mass hysteria that we're in, which I keep talking about. Mm. Because I think what happens now is, is that by creating your own thing, then it can actually, it can dilute a lot quicker than it usually would have done. Now, I'm not saying that, I'm not here to be this super um, purist guy, yeah? But you look at like what was going on with Grime and that, and like it's had a long period of time in its natural habitat and yeah. art form yeah mm. if you fast forward that now to, 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 to today to today that era today the mass hysteria that we're in right now would have just blown that up so quick and then what happens then is there any real strong structure in it because remember everyone needs everything now I think you're starting to see it with the clothing brand mm. I was watching we talked about Cortez already yeah he Clint hates this reselling era he hates, he hates it, it. He hates it. And it's ironic because it's like, I understand exactly why he would hate it. Mm. But it's it's mad because it's one of them things where it's like, he's created something for whatever reason. He's created, for whatever reason, he's created this thing, yeah? And then a bunch of people have said, yeah, I like this, like that fuck with it or whatever. The mass hysteria now has got involved, which is then everyone's buying it super quick. It sells out super quick, which what, what, what does it do then? It creates demand. It makes more people say, why has that gone so quick? I want a part of that. Mm. And then before you know it, it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And it starts going further away from what it actually originally was and what it was about. But at the same time, the mass hysteria has also made it big. I think a lot of people like Clint, no, would turn around and say, you know what? I would take away 50% of the gas. If I if I could if I could take away some of the reselling aspects of, of it, I would do that with the sacrifice of fifty percent of my of the gas. Do you know what you done today? Someone made a fake version of the tracksuit bottoms. He said it's not coming out. Done. Cancel order. But cancel order. But <laughs> you're not gonna get me like that. You're mad. <sighs> He is a rude boy. And do you know what it is? It's not an act, man. I'm telling you, the boy has been like it from day one. Hero. Yeah, so... Hero. So, anyway, I say all of that to say this, man. Within struggle, there's always going to be something. There's, people are always going to create stuff. I just think that because we're in such a mass hysteria part of life here, yeah, that how long does it actually get to... How long does it actually get to nurture properly? That's my thing. Down to this. Now it's just so mad that it's down to. So Kanye um, tweeted something. He said something the other day. Let me get my phone. Because I like Kanye. And please, <laughs> this has to be taken with context. For the simple fact that this information given to the wrong person 
We'll talk nonsense. Let me just find a ting. Where is it? Here we go. Kanye tweets. You have the best ideas. Other people's opinions are usually more destructive than informative. Follow your own vision. Base your actions on love. Do things you love. And if you don't absolutely love something, stop doing it. If you don't absolutely love something, stop doing it as soon as you can. So, with that information, I just genuinely believe in life, like Clint, like yourself, um, even East, East Africa over here. If you just do something you love and accept that you're not anywhere near the end of the journey and you've got mistakes to make, just do it. Mm. And all the opinions that you get at the start, I think just try and distance yourself from them. Because mm. that mass hysteria at things that you do, getting so uh, it's too much information at one point. And just like self-educate yourself to a point where you go, I offer something now. And then um, involve yourself in the in the frantic stuff. Because it, it is what you said is definitely happening. Mm. Things get far too much attention too early. Ma- and then way too early. Instead of that situation being able to grow the way it needs to naturally grow in life, mm. it's taught how to grow within the parameters of four walls. Right. And as wherever that business grows where is, is where you have to grow. And if you end up living in a different direction to where the industry is growing, then what happens is you have problems. You see people like, oh, my label is this, my label is that. Or, it's not that. Your label wants to go over there. You want to go over here. You're now my parents. Right. Don't get married. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I hear that. It's mad. Can we just, on the music front as well, yeah? Mm. On a big, massive, honourable... You know what I might do, actually? I might do honourable shouts. I might just do them. You should have been doing that, though. I you know. do it, though. I do it still, but, but I might just do it. Sec- it. Yeah. No, you shouldn't still I'm... section it. Huh? You shouldn't section it. Just say it. Yeah, because they're honourable shout-outs, so guess Listen, who knows when they're going to go. Massive honour. Yeah, right. Massive honourable shout-out to Nuts, man. Nux. Oh, let me tell you, I'm so proud of this brother. Like, you know, for a minute, like, I've been talking about him a lot, yeah? And I'm mm-hmm. saying, Nux is the, he's the guy. Mm. He just is. He just lyrically, musically, the sack stuff that he has with the music and whatnot. The swag. Like, the swag, everything, bro. He's cold. Don't make this one pass you by. You know what? He announced the tour. Because he sold out. Um, last year he sold out his show pretty quickly last year wasn't able to be there because I was I was away and then he announced a tour and whatnot, UK tour and what not sold out in five minutes I said yeah I said is that where we're at now they're just selling out like that okay I'm loving it you know what even still now yeah you still have the opportunity because I've been telling you Nux is the one go and check this brother out and thank me afterwards if you haven't already done it. Nox is now, for me, obviously, the mass hysteria thing and whatnot. <laughs> we need to figure out a way of making sure that your thing is pure and stays in its... You understand what I'm saying? So that, like, don't lose direction and all of these type of things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? But you know what? Now, like, I'm just... these All of these steps that he was taking from early on, like, he can look back at it and say, rah, like, I've, I've, I can see all of, like, all of the pain, all of the flipping hardships, all of the flipping, all of, like, the difficult elements of it, staying up mad late and that, and, you know, having a, having a deal with and coming out of the deal and being certain about something, being unsure, the excitement, all of, all of these emotions that you go through, yeah? You know, like, now you could look back and say, now nah, I'm on the train. I'm actually on the train. I'm moving. I can feel it. And I'm and I just love it for him. Do you know what I mean? I love it for him as well, man. So honourable shout out to to Nux every time. Still, I'm gonna try and I need to get in there. Obviously, man would have bought a ticket and that, but you already know my thing still. But I have to be there. So he just <laughs> I have to be there. He's got to be there. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Man. I just have to be there. I wasn't at the last one, but I have to be there still. <laughs>